Hey crafters, welcome to the Graphic 45 office. I'm Shari Philomahala here to teach you how to create your very own pillow box uh, gift holders. These are fantastic for so many reasons. A, because they're simple and fast to make, and B, because they use up some of your scraps so you're not letting anything go to waste. And they're great for anybody you have a gift in mind for. They are uh, perfect for holding gift cards, treats, jewelry, uh, whatever you could think of. So let's go ahead and get started on this Club G45 2019 Volume 1 tutorial and this project is brought to us by the great and wonderful Annette Green. So let's get started. So this is what we are going to be creating in this tutorial. You can see we're going to be doing a little bit of fussy cutting, but the main thing we are going to be making this super cute little DIY pillow box. This is a great size for, as you can see, I've stored a tea bag in here, but it's also perfect for jewelry, other little treats and gift cards. So, and um, you can find these handy dandy templates and the project sheet. Um, the project sheet you can find in the link below in the description. And the pillow box template does come inside of our eight by eight paper pads. So we're gonna be using our garden goddess to cut this out. And you can see in our paper pads, we have these super cute templates and the 12 by 12 collection packs are a little different than the eight by eights. So you can try out some new things, but we are going to be cutting this out. So I'm just going to use some big scissors to just cut around this pillow box template. And if you would like, to reuse this template, you can always go ahead and make a copy or just use this as a template. So we'll just go ahead and cut along the solid line. So once you've cut that out, then we're gonna go ahead, you can either use a stylus if you have one of those, or you could always use a bone folder as well. So. Uh, whatever you've got in your supplies. Uh, the stylus is probably a bit easier, so if you do have one of those, I would recommend it. And then you just go along the dotted lines, and you're just going to trace those dotted lines with your stylus. And I would do that, um, you know, maybe two or three times just to make sure that you are really forming those score lines. So this is just gonna be scoring our pillow box so when we go to fold it all together it's all ready to go so after you've gone over all those score lines now we're going to go ahead and uh, just fold along those lines so i'm folding everything inwards you can see sometimes there is a little bit of the plastic hang tag left over on these on this packaging so you want to be careful and peel that off like so throw that away and continue to crease and then I'm just going to also just do a little bit of creasing these curved top and bottom areas as well before it's all put together that way when it's all glued together it'll be that much easier. So just a little, call it ghost folding. So we folded that and now we can adhere our flap over the top of our pillow box. So you could use a liquid adhesive or a dry adhesive. Um, if you do a double-sided dry adhesive, you're gonna make sure that you want to use something really heavy duty because since this is that nice heavy duty gloss cardstock, it's very heavy. So um, now that I've used a liquid adhesive, I'm gonna take just a few paper clips or clothespins, whatever you have in handy. You could always just fold it, uh, put a book over the top if you needed to and just let this dry for a quick minute. 
While that dries, we are gonna grab our thoughtfully planted paper, or if you are, have done the mixed media album, the photo binder that we uh, did for Club G45 already, you should have some scraps left over, so you could use a scrap of this left over or uh, whatever else you have, and we are gonna cut this down to be seven, um, sorry, we're gonna cut this down to be eight inches by seven and seven eighths. So just under an inch. And uh, we want it to be just under an inch because uh, we are gonna thread this through our cute little buckle that comes inside your tags and pockets. So again, if you are part of Club G45, we use most of these tags and pockets in our fun album that we created. Um, but we do have this left over and it is gorgeous for this project. So this is gonna thread through there, just going from the underside over the top and back under. So we've got a cute little watch-like effect. We are gonna be doing some fussy cutting from this Shine From Within 8x8 paper. Super cute, and we're gonna be fussy cutting out some flowers that we're gonna be stacking. So the first thing we are gonna fussy cut out is this sunflower. We're gonna grab this pink flower here. And then last but not least, this super cute little dainty pink flower as well. So if you are new to Graphic 45, maybe you don't know how much we love fussy cutting here. Since our papers are very design heavy, we love being able to use those designs to our advantage by creating our very own embellishments. So the first thing I would suggest doing is just taking um, the area around or just cutting around the area of what you want to fussy cut. This way uh, we're not using a big bulky paper and then you can go ahead and go in there and start to cut out those details. And of course you can always get as intricate as you'd like or you could keep it a little more simple every project is your own and I'm sure the recipient or anyone viewing your work is just going to be astounded by how amazing your project is so if fussy cutting isn't your thing just keep it simple And then I always suggest, if you can see, I am my hand is doing most of the work, my left hand, as it's driving the paper through and my blade doesn't move much at all. It's also a great idea to fussy cut out, just taking some of the busier design papers and just find some of the images that speak to you and cut those out. And that can always help serve as some motivation for your next project. So when you get that paper pad at home and you're not sure what you wanna create next, just pull out your scissors and see what speaks to you. So you can see we're almost done with this one and it's looking great and then the other ones are even easier so when you're doing those I'm not gonna walk you through those ones but just be sure to relax and enjoy yourself and then if you want to take this the extra step you can always go ahead and ink your edges just using a complementary ink graphic 45 has 12 inks now so we have something for all of our signature colors so if you're looking for some inks to use be sure to check out our decades inks this one here i'm using is called venetian lace but just inking those edges always helps hide any imperfections and then it makes each layer stand out just a little bit more. So there you have it. So now that we fussy cut out all three of those flowers, I'm just gonna take my bone folder. You can use uh, do this lightly with scissors or a pen and just kind of move those petals upwards. This is gonna just give it a little more 
dimension onto our project. And once we've done that with all three of our flowers, then we can go ahead and start layering these together on top of that our cute little watch band that we've created. So I'm using our scrapbook adhesives, 3D foam circles. If you're a part of the Club G45, this is what you got in your kit this month. And we are loving these circles. Uh, be sure uh, to use all those circles. And then also this negative space is really great to pop up larger areas as well. So just cut that apart for those also. But these we love because they add extra dimension to our DIY embellishments. And they're also great since they come in different sizes. They come in white, which is what we are using today. And then uh, they have black also, which is so great with our dark collections. And the little tops peel off so beautifully and easy. So this is what we have so far. And now that this has been set aside to dry, we can go ahead and take off our paper clips and we can start forming our beautiful pillow box. So I'm gonna go ahead and fold this together now. So using these two with the notches, those are gonna go in first. And then my larger one is gonna go, pop that in second and then the other side. You may need to just kind of move these along and just make sure those creases are nice and good. So that was the important part of when you were using your stylus or your bone folder that you went over those a few times. But now, got our front of our pillow box it's got the tab in the front that way our flaps lay down towards the bottom rather than having it this way so we are going to just adhere this piece onto the front of our box and then add a little tag and a key so I've added some liquid adhesive to the back of my strip just call it a watch band strip to keep it easy. And so that strip, we are just gonna slowly start working around the box. And meet it together on the back. And then make sure that it aligns just right on top of each other. And then you can always go back in and make sure that everything is all the air pockets are being pushed out and this is just a beautiful way to take our pillow boxes to the next level and then use up some of those scraps and i know that you always have leftover design pieces so why not why not turn them into a beautiful gift and then also from our tags and pockets, we have a leftover little banner notch. So this is great to write who the recipient is on. And then using our ornate keys, we're just gonna take one of those. We are just gonna thread this ribbon through this little hole. So you can see it is a small hole because we're using one of the smallest keys. So I'm gonna try first cutting this on a nice angle our ribbon you can use twine which would be even easier but cutting it on that nice angle let it go through nice and easy so now i am going to just find my center and go ahead and tie this into a bow so far looking good and just go ahead and fix it to how you like it and then we'll trim off our ends And then this is going to adhere just nicely onto our little banner. And I'm gonna adhere that first and then let it dry for a minute and then I'll glue the whole tag down. But when you're creating this for a gift, 
you can go ahead and wait to glue this part on until after you've filled in your sentiment to who it is to. So not to cause any problems. So I'll let that dry and then I'll glue it right under here. And you can see it's just got some beautiful dimension. It is a perfect little gift holder. We hope you enjoyed this quick and easy tutorial and be sure to share your projects with us using the hashtag club G45 and try it out with some other collections, other paper lines. We want to see, uh, see what you're working with. Happy paper crafting.